Hey guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my two months late, but it's still here, Southern Charm Readathon wrap up. I had an absolute blast being one of the co-hosts for the Southern Term Readathon in May that the beautiful Amanda put together. It was so much fun. I had a blast. So incredibly thankful that she asked me and I had so much fun. I had a v very ambitious TBR um, and I did not read all the books that I had set out to read, but that's okay. I did read four and I started two other ones and have soft DNF'd them for now. Um, not sure uh, when I will pick them back up. But without further ado, let's just jump into it. I am just going to talk about the books that I've read. My main goal was to fill the t the bingo sheet and I did stretch them a little bit and I was able to fill the bingo sheet. So I will go ahead and put at the end somewhere I'm sure or here, I don't know. Um, I will put a picture of the filled bingo sheet so you can see what I read and kind of where I put them. But today I'm really just going to talk about what I read and my reviews and things like that. So first up was the Paper Daughters of Chinatown and this is adapted for young readers based on the best-selling novel of the same name by Heather B. Moore and Allison Hong Merrill. And y'all this book was so so good. I think I rated it, let me double check, yes I rated it a five out of five star. It was so well done. I, after reading this I want to read the original like the adult version of this because obviously this was adapted for kids you get the point of view of the young girl and then the point of view of the lady who was helping um, pull the young girls out of Chinatown during this era this is set in 1890s San Francisco's Chinatown and it was to help the um, some immigrant women and girls in that era. I didn't know much about the history of this before I went into this and now I'm very intrigued and it was just very eye-opening, very well told story, moved very fast and I very much enjoyed it. It was also very emotional. Next I read The Blackout Book Club by Amy Lynn Green. I rated this a 4 out of 5 star and I really really enjoyed this. This had so many point of views and in my review I said if you really ever want to look at like the real life of World War II, like just like the mundane day to day of all different walks of life. I think that this was a very good showing of that. I really enjoyed the book club aspect and how it became found family and friends and just standing up for each other. I did feel like it got a little bit drawn out and long because we were seeing the same day told from different perspectives and after a while that just kind of got to be long. I did enjoy the narration style that since we did see so many um, and I really loved the journal entries like the book club notes that were in the book. So overall it was a really enjoyable experience. Amy Lynn Green is a fantastic author. Something about it like it was lacking something but I can't pinpoint what um that's why I didn't get a five star because when I first started I really thought it was going to be a five star but the longer I got into the story and the more like drawn out it felt um it it went down to a four but still highly enjoyable I definitely would recommend it again Amy is just such a talented author that I I have enjoyed I just enjoy her writing style and the stories that she tells they're heartfelt and just lovely and I really like her. Then I read To Spark a Match by Jen Tirano. This book I gave 5 out of 5 stars. It was so good. This is book 2 in her Matchmaker series and it was about Miss Adelaide Devine and Gideon Abbott and y'all. <laughs> it was so stinking cute and it was just fun. And so Gideon is a like intelligence private eye-esque kind of character and Allie just always gets herself into little pickles and they've been friends because they are friends of the previous couple in the series Gwendolyn and 
Crumbs, I don't remember his name. Um, that's how they met. But they just are thrusted into this, like, smuggling-esque type situation, but not really smuggling, into some bad stuff, and all kinds of shenanigans happen. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what all to say without, like, giving the plot away. All I'm saying, I super enjoyed this. It was so funny. Hilari hilarity ensued, and Adeline is just kind of, again a happen she's just always getting into little scuffs and scrapes she's just a mess naturally and then Gideon is just so so besotted and he's just so smitten with her and everybody but him and her can see it it's just great uh and all the side characters are just goofy and fun and she is just a who and I super enjoyed it very much so and I can't wait to read book three Next, I read A Wedding Mismatch by Kaylee Baldwin. Um, I forgot to put it on my Goodreads, so give me a second. Uh, so, I didn't give this book a rating, and I forgot to put it on my Goodreads, so I'll have to go back and do that. Um, I was kind of disappointed in this, honestly. I was really excited, but I just didn't love it so I'm not gonna put an actual rating on Goodreads and I think if I do it'll probably be like a two and a half three star nothing was necessary like I loved the premise of this book it wasn't a bad book let me just start off by saying that there wasn't any content that I was against in this book I just personally did not enjoy it I felt it was kind of disjointed and didn't really make sense. I did love, he is a speech therapist? No, what is he? Yes. Yes, he is a speech therapist and she, now that I think about it, if he's a speech therapist, why was he there? Is he just a therapist? I don't know. <laughs> I enjoyed the setting of this. It was set in a senior, like, a senior living destination island place in Florida. Um, that was fun. He worked for them. I think he, I, if I remember correctly, I, obviously, now that I think about it, I feel like I'm wrong, but I feel like I remember them saying that he was a speech therapist, but it doesn't really make sense for him because he lives and works at this senior facility. So he is, he works there. It's some kind of therapist role. She is a self-help influencer who loves being single. So she's always on Instagram and TikTok and whatever and doing lives and she got a book deal to write a book about being happily single and they're forced in forced proximity and it's kind of like a grumpy sunshine hate to love situation but written kind of weird but I did love there were some great themes of healing from grief and realizing you're not alone realizing you don't have to be perfect to be loved realizing that you can be completely happy and content and it doesn't come from a relationship but just the people you surround yourself with and just learning to be content in wherever you are but it is totally okay to be happy and content if you are in a relationship there were a lot of good great things that I did enjoy about it but there were a lot of things that I just didn't really care for so I didn't actually really love the senior citizens all that much I felt this is in the Diamond Cove romantic comedy series and I ha I think that they're supposed to be read as they can be read as standalones but I really do feel like I missed a lot so I think this is the second book in the series and the senior citizens are matchmaking their grandkids and I love that idea but I didn't really love this like because we got one of the characters perspectives one of the senior citizens like because it's the girl's grandma and I liked that we were going through her real life situation but I felt like at some points that was the main focus but there was never really any resolution to that like I felt very 
discombobulated while reading this story. And while the whole point of like the grandparents was to match make, they had nothing to do with the two of these characters getting together. And they kept having like meetings where they got together to talk about their matchmaking. And I, every time those happened, I just kind of got pulled out of the story. I just wanted to be back with the two main characters who are Elena and Asher. Again, not a bad book. And if you need something quick and easy and summary, you might find that you love this. I don't know. But for me personally, I just did not, I did not enjoy it. Now let's talk about my two soft DNFs. So first I started When the Day Comes by Gabriel Meyer and I got 104 pages in, which is eight chapters. And I just had had a really long couple weeks at work and just, historical was not what I wanted what I needed and so I was finding myself getting very bogged down with the story however I know that everyone loves the series and Gabe is amazing the writing style is very interesting the story is flowing naturally I just personally had to put it down because I just was not in the historical mood and this is history <laughs> it is set um, in 1774 Colonial Williamsburg, which is not my choice of history, honestly, which I know is odd considering that I am American and happy to be American and you'd think that I would be all about old American history before America was like Declaration of Independence and all that stuff. Um, however, it's not my favorite bit of history to read about. I get very bogged down with it. Um, and then the other half is 1914 Gilded Age New York City. You'd also think that I would love this because this is one of my favorite time periods to read. But the main girl character is kind of frustrating me a little bit right now. <laughs> valid reason to frustrate me. Uh, valid reason for what she's feeling I should say. I softy enoughed it for now. I'm hoping to get back to it at some point, um, but I think I would have to be in a very specific mood for this. But I know that everyone really enjoyed this series, so I'm hoping to get to it. Another one I softy enough was The Forever Pact by Jamie Casey, and I got 45 pages into this, cha five chapters, and I can't decide if I'm going to softy enough it or just DNF it completely. So far, this is not for me. Um, I'm not enjoying plot at all um the storyline doesn't really make sense and i don't know how we're gonna get a f like 400 page book out of the plot that we have so trying to decide what i want to do about this i might just dnf it um i might try to get to like maybe chapter 10 and see where I'm at there. I don't know, but for now I am soft DNFing it and we'll see what I do next. So those are the books that I read and started in May. It started out with a great month and then just slowly picked up some books that were not for me, unfortunately. But I did overall have a good reading month. The books I did not get to were The Divine Proverb of Strussel by Sarah Brunsfeld. I do want to get to this, but again, I was in a reading mood where I just needed light, fast, and easy going because it was... a crazy month and then I also didn't get to Night Falls on Predicament Avenue uh, because like the couple days leading up to May and even into like the first couple days of May I read The Lost Boys of Barlow Theater with Celestria we both had a wonderful time reading that um but I had read a Jamie Jo Wright book and wasn't quite in the mood for another one but I do have this to get to soon and then I was going to read A Return to Hawthorne House which is a novella collection and this was going to be my pick for our Christian fiction booktube book club that we have but I did not get to this either so that's that those are my reads um let me know how you did for the Southern Charm Readathon. I had a wonderful time. I can't wait to participate next year. I think I've learned from the last two years, don't bite off more than I can chew. It is okay to just pick a couple books to fill multiple prompts because that's what I had to end up doing anyways. Um, but uh, yeah, again, had so much fun with it. Thank you so much, Amanda, for hosting it. Thank you for letting me be a co-host. I had a great time. And let me know in the comments below what you read for the 
readathon if you joined let me know if you've read any of the books that I read and if you've read the books that I soft DNF'd let me know should I keep pushing on I know Gabe's is a big yes but let me know why I should keep pushing um, and yeah don't forget you can check out my blog at fortheloveofchristianfiction.blogspot.com you could also check out my Instagram at fortheloveofchristianfiction all my other links are in the description box below I think that's it I'll see you guys next time bye